this is a nice quote today. No one can deny the possibility of adequate nutrition and the prolonged maintenance of health and vigor on a vegetarian diet. That's a quote from the Journal of the American Medical Association in 1912. Of course, uh, there are other types of benefits from eating more plant-based nutrition, costs, and the environment. Um, no planet, no health. Who cares how healthy you are if there's no planet? And animal agribusiness creates more greenhouse gases than all transportation combined, which of course includes cars. Um, and at least a, a model out of the UK and Belgium show that a wider implementation of a plant-based plant-based eating would lead to large net economic gains for society and improved health outcomes for the population in a country, the U.S., where healthcare costs keep on growing as a percentage of the GDP, like we got to start to bend the curve somehow. And gosh, if there is only some potential solution, it's just a mystery. Obviously, I'm kidding. Um, so we talked about the impact of a plant-based diet on cardiovascular health, cholesterol, inflammation, blood pressure, weight, diabetes, novel risk factors and quality of life and mortality. And I wanted to touch on another topic, uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, which is also potentially meaningfully impacted by diet and lifestyle and is an area that seems to get people's attention. Uh, so the definition of erectile dysfunction is the inability to attain or maintain an erection for satisfactory sexual performance. And there is a definition, the IIEF, International uh, Index of Erectile Function 5 score, it's a validated score uh, for it. And they ask you five questions with one to five points based on the answer. The first question is, how do you rate your confidence that you could get and keep an erection from very low to high? And a score of 22 to 25 is no erectile dysfunction. And there are different levels of severe, intermediate, moderate. I don't have those numbers up here, but this is an easy Google find. Uh, so how does one get an erection? It's a psychological, neurological, and vascular event. Um, and blood will flow into the penis through an artery, and it will engorge the penis and go into uh, vascular or, or venous venules which will expand and then hit up against fibrous tissue. The, um, and that fibrous tissue, the blood will hit up against it and make it more difficult for blood to exit the, the penis. And that's how you get an erection and that there's a psychological component and a neurologic and, and vascular component to that. What causes erectile dysfunction? Well, there's really, they put into three categories, organic, psychogenic, and mixed. And organic, kind of like a medical medical cause is the most common with vascular in the U.S. being by far the most common. But there are other causes, neurogenic, hormonal, drug-induced, side effects of some medications can do that. Uh, psychogenic, anxiety, depression can do that, mixed causes. But vascular and the same kind of disease process that causes poor blood flow to the heart also can cause poor blood flow to the penis and cause erectile dysfunction. And it's common from 40 to 59 year olds. This happens about 15% of the time, 60s, 45, 70s, 70% of the time. But I think it's much higher than that. I just think people don't want to talk about it. We frequently call erectile dysfunction, the canary in the coal mine for heart disease, because typically erectile dysfunction happens two to three years before angina or chest pain from cholesterol blockages and about three to five years before cardiovascular events, like heart attack or stroke. Um, and why? Well, the artery to the penis is smaller than the arteries to the heart. So by the time you have a blockage in an artery in the penis causing poor blood flow to the penis, you very likely have a blockage in the blood vessel in the heart, um, but it's just not clinically obvious. Um, Yet. And atherosclerosis, your cholesterol disease in the blood vessels, it's a systemic disease. It doesn't just affect one blood vessel or, or one little area, it's, it affects the whole vascular tree. How about some epidemiology about erectile dysfunction? 
Well, in a prospective cohort of almost 2,000 men, 40 to, 7 years of age, 40 to 70 years of age, erectile dysfunction was associated with a 40% greater hazard of death versus no erectile dysfunction. So vasculogenic, that's what I have here, yeah, vasculogenic erectile dysfunction shares the same risk factors as heart disease. So if you have diabetes, in various studies, you have a much higher odds of having erectile dysfunction, just like with heart disease. High cholesterol significantly increases the odds of having erectile dysfunction, just like heart disease. Obesity significantly increases the odds of having erectile dysfunction, just like heart disease. Inflammation, just like heart disease. Smoking, just like heart disease, including cigars. So they share same risk factors, not surprisingly. And when one is evaluating it, oftentimes we'll incorporate you know, our urologic colleagues because they are indeed experts in this area. Um, but we will look for psychological causes, medications. We will look for um, hormonal issues. Is there a testosterone level issue? Is there a thyroid issue? Um, and we will try to optimize cardiovascular risk factors, including diet and exercise and stopping smoking. Um, and sometimes improving erectile function can be particularly motivating. There are multiple studies that show that losing weight can help with erectile dysfunction. And this is effective lifestyle changes on erectile dysfunction in obese men, a randomized controlled trial. This is 110 men followed for two years without a lot of vascular or a lot of risk factors. And they had detailed instruction regarding diet and exercise to lose 10% of weight versus general info. And they lost uh, a little over five kilograms versus a little less than one. And the uh, IIEF score, that questionnaire for erectile function improved in the intervention group significantly, but remained stable in the control group. This is the effect of intensive lifestyle changes on erectile dysfunction in men. This was 209 with or at risk for erectile dysfunction to follow them for two years. And they advised weight reduction by more than 5%, increased monounsaturated fat, uh, fat consumption to greater than 10% of calories, the less saturated fat, increased fiber consumption, decreased saturated fat consumption, and encouraged exercise versus general guidance on healthy diet and lifestyle. And normal erectile function increased from 34 to 56% in the intervention arm versus 36 to 38% in the control arm, a significant difference. Can't read the title of this one, but this was um, in people with uh, type two diabetes and they had 306 overweight or obese men with erectile dysfunction, the intensive lifestyle change versus general advice. And at one year, the intervention group lost significantly more weight and had a small but significant increase in the IIEF score versus control, which had no significant improvement. And there is multiple randomized studies of a Mediterranean style diet, a diet enriched in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, and lentils, improving erectile function. Uh, I think this is erect, I can't quite read it, but I think this is erectile dysfunction in men with the metabolic syndrome, and which is a constellation of risk factors we mentioned earlier as part of the Cardia study, or as part of the uh, Framingham cohort perspective study they looked at. And 65 men with erectile dysfunction, Mediterranean diet versus control. And two years, 13 men in the Mediterranean group and 12 in the control group reported normal erectile function. And endothelial function and inflammatory markers were improved in the intervention group, but unchanged in the control group, uh, which uh, lends mechanistic reason as to why they may have found what they found, or they found what they found. Uh, in a cross-sectional analysis of almost 700 men in the ICARIA study, uh, was it was presented as an abstract, and long-term adherence to a Mediterranean diet was associated with improved sexual function as measured by IAF 5 score. I have not seen it yet published, but hopefully it has been. What about erectile function and specific foods?
So pistachios. In this study's pistachio diet improves erectile function parameters and serum lipids in patients with erectile dysfunction. This is an uncontrolled trial, I'm not super high quality. Uncontrolled, 17 men with ED, 100 grams of pistachio nuts per day to a standard diet for three weeks, and they saw significant improvements in erectile function. Pistachio. But this is a more rigorous study. Effective nut consumption on erectile and sexual function in healthy men, a secondary outcome, uh, outcome analysis of the Ferdinut's nuts randomized controlled trial. And this is a randomized controlled trial of 83 men with ED. It was a Western diet uh, with 60 grams of nuts per day versus a Western diet and avoidance of nuts. And there is no significant change in erectile function. Now, whether that's just the Western diet overwhelmed the nuts or nuts don't actually help for this, hard to know exactly, but this is what they found. Um, and this, I can't read fully the title, but 53 men with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction, this is pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice was associated with the trend toward improvement in erectile activity as assessed by the Global Assessment Questionnaire, but no such trend was seen in the IIEF score. So really people think more that healthful dietary patterns, not surprisingly, are the ticket to improving erectile function. And there's related observational data. This is dietary flavonoid intake and incidence of erectile dysfunction in the highest quintile of fruit at 14% lower risk of incident ED over 10 years. Um, erectile dysfunction in fruit and vegetable consumption among diabetic Canadian men. This is a cross-sectional analysis of 1,500 men. 26% reported symptoms or a diagnosis of ED. Each daily serving of fruit and vegetable as measured by a food frequency questionnaire was associated with a 10% decrease odds in self-reported ED. Association between comorbidity and erectile dysfunction in patients with diabetes, 300 Iranian men with diabetes consuming fruits seldom or weekly was associated with a higher odds of erectile dysfunction, 3.2 times higher odds versus daily consumption of fruits. Erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular risk factors in a Mediterranean dietary cohort. 400 or so Spanish men, 42% with ED, consumption of tree nuts two or more times per week, and consumption of vegetables one or more times per day was associated with lower odds of erectile dysfunction, respectively, here, as assessed by the questionnaire. Dietary patterns seem to be helpful. Dietary factors in erectile dysfunction, 100 men with ED and 100 matched controls, higher intakes of fruits, nuts, vegetables, and higher monounsaturated fat to saturated fat ratio, more plant-based foods were associated with lower risk of ED. How about supplements? There's not really great data, and there's no particular supplement that's formally recommended for erectile dysfunction. Exercise, absolutely. It's part of the American Neurologic Association guidelines. The one caveat they give is cycling. And the issue is if you sit on a seat that like pushes up underneath, it could squish the pudendal artery and that can injure or, or the, the pudendal nerve and that can cause injury there. So it's important to get those seats with the divots to protect the pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve. Smoking clearly associated with a higher incidence of erectile dysfunction. Um, yeah, it's tough, they're tough, tough to get people to stop smoking. It's a real vexing issue, uh, but can, please do. Uh, this is from our article that we published in the American Journal of Medicine about lifestyle change and erectile uh, function and saying how erectile dysfunction is the canary in the coal mine warning about increased risk of future atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events. It's common and impacted by lifestyle, can be worsened by diabetes, obesity, hypertension, inflammation, and smoking. Data is limited regarding supplements. Improving erectile function with lifestyle change may also reduce the risk of future atherosclerotic cardiovascular events, and I can't really read these two bubbles. So erectile dysfunction is common. It's probably underreported. It's the canary in the coal mine of cardiovascular disease. It's overlapping risk factors with cardiovascular disease. Lifestyle changes improve both cardiovascular disease risk and erectile function, and potential improvements in erectile function may prove to be uniquely motivated. Thank you.